Dad Pod. Well, this is a video thing as well. We have a name. Podcast. A midlife crisis. Howdy Daddy. Mm. Midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Dadcast. That's not bad, actually. Yeah. And a very, uh, I was going to say very good morning to you, but it doesn't matter. It could be, it could be evening, it could be very late at night when you're watching this, and indeed it will be when this is streamed. So a very good evening to you. You're welcome along to the latest episode of the Dadcast. It's called Nappy Brain. That's what that is. That inability to remember stuff that, you know, like what time of the day it is, <laughs> your name, your children's names. Is it called Nappy Brain or just lack of preparation? No, no, it's definitely Nappy Brain. Okay. I mean, I know... No matter how much I prepared, I would still <laughs> potentially make balls the, of the, the time of the day wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, do you find that you get your kids' names wrong from time to time? Everything a lot. Wrong. Pretty much. <laughs> the eldest, because she's the one whose name you said the most, gets roundly like shouted at when you're actually chatting at the other two. It's like, <laughs> and she's like, "I'm over here. I'm over here." I could definitely see it happening. It hasn't happened to me yet, but I do remember being a kid, and there would be times where my father would run through not just my brother and sister's name before His saying brothers. mine. All of his brothers yeah. and sisters. <laughs> so he could easily need six goes at it before he actually got my name right. My uncle was definitely like, I was like but he's like about 40 years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> Is there not the problem of, so there's one child who you give out to more than all the rest, but even when the other one does something, you're still he's not, shouting. Yeah, yeah. It's instinctive. It's just the order. Yeah. It's just the order. So you've got, you're working through it. Yeah. And like I'd say it must be fairly annoying if you're the eldest. You're like, I'm literally doing nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you being such a prick to me? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just it's our innate person. You might have noticed, uh, those of you who don't have too much nappy brain, that there is one dad, two dads, only three dads in studio. We have another dad Skyped in. Adrian Barry, congratulations. Thanks very much, lads. Ah! Uh, I am knackered. Hello. <laughs> Where are I'm you? Full of brain. <laughs> uh, what? Where are you? I'm in. Uh, I'm at home, Nathan. That's what tends to happen. I have to okay. left uh, last week. Congratulations, obviously, Adrian. But I think we should point out to our listeners that Adrian is something of a Skype Nazi. In that, <laughs> not a day passes that he doesn't send a emotionally charged email giving out about the quality of our Skype lines and where people are situated. And now he's literally lying on the floor hiding because if his wife finds that he's doing some work in the middle of paternity leave, she is about to kill him. This doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, there's all of that going on. Yeah, I've just given the... Li- look, that's fair enough, Nathan. I take your point, point heard. Um, I'm going to sort of uh, point out the mitigating circumstances, obviously, but uh, fair point. Um, I'm wrecked, yeah. I've just I've given the... The oldest fella bath. Uh, it's felt like such an achievement, to be honest with you. Um, achieving anything with the day. I don't know. You've obviously just been through it, and uh, the lads are maybe have forgotten the trauma of the, the initial stages. But um, bloody hell, doing anything with the day feels like such a bloody achievement. So what, what's going on? You had a baby. That we haven't actually said that. You had a baby, yeah. a baby girl. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, what's the difference between a boy and a girl? What was that moment like? How was the whole experience? How much of it are you willing to share? Was it good? Um, the shitting up the back has been the first that Nathan was talking about the other week. Is, uh, <laughs> it turns out it's a real thing. Um, but yeah, it was it was mad. Yeah, it was. Um, what day were we today? Friday. Uh, it was almost a week ago now, which in itself is sort of hard to believe. Um, and yeah, it was um, sort of uh, water broke. Um, had to offload the other child. Obviously, um, went into the hospital. It was sort of. Uh, no labour had begun when we let in at the start and then it was um, so they were like oh well look we can you know what we might do is we might bring you out to the you know the uh, purgatory that we've spoken about before they were like we might bring you out to purgatory and um, sort of you can hang out there for a while I was kind of saying um, will we just give it a couple of hours maybe we wait a couple of hours just give it a bit of breathing space Um, and we did that and then labour came on and it was a long and traumatic day. It was so that was sort of six a.m. when uh, my wife's waters went, and then it was just after four uh, when the baby was born. So okay, it was a long and bloody traumatic day. Ten but hours. Bloody, fundamentally profound. Yeah. Well, look. Here's the thing. Um, as as uh, Nathan points out, you're a Skype Nazi, and the Skype line isn't amazing. The the microphone isn't great on the phone. So we're right. gonna, we're going to wait. Make you do this in person in studio at some point when you come back to work. You know, next week. <laughs> In about or, a month. Or whenever that is. Are you going to Tato Park or over the next week? <laughs> I, I'd recommend it. Just get out of the house. 
it's now it now seems like a very wise choice. Right, go on. I'll talk to you when I'm on a better line. Good luck. And are you, right. sorry, well, is everybody well? Is everybody happy? Are you happy? Or are you traumatized? Have you been crying? Everybody, as I've been pointing out, mother and daughter are absolutely flying it. Father and son are totally knackered. So um, that's sort of, <laughs> that's kind of where we're at. Um, have I been crying? No, I felt like crying quite a bit, but um, I haven't actually broken down just Let yet. it go, let it go. No need to hold it in anymore. <laughs> it's much you're, more comfortable on the other side. This would be a good moment to do it, is what you're saying. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no, we, we also chose to have the baby and move into a brand new house at the, uh, in the same, uh, almost the same day. Yeah, a couple of days removed, so not the wisest thing. Well, enjoy these uh, traumatic, life-changing experiences <laughs> and we'll talk to you on a good line real soon, Adrian. Congratulations from everybody. Good luck, thanks, lads. Good man. And then there were eight kids. Yeah. Eight kids on the dad pod. There you go. And when we started this podcast, no, there were only... No, I'm very sure there's Sorry, ten. Have I, have I li- missed out on somebody's? No, nine. I've got three. Oh, you've got three. Ten. I've got three. Yeah, there's ten. When we started out on this little journey eight. a few short weeks ago, we only had eight. We oh, yeah. we're, increased. We're, we're made in, Dave. <laughs> we're we're increased made the quota by 25% in such a short space of time. Such fecundity. <laughs> uh, a couple of quick comments right before we get to some of the um, stuff that we need to talk about this week. Uh, well, lads, says Sean, my wife and I recently found out we were pregnant with our first child, still early days, 11 weeks. That's very early, best of luck. Um, this happened to coincide with Dad Cast launching. Cheers for all the advice and laughs so far. My wife usually huffs on weekend car journeys when I have off the ball on in the car, but has no problem listening to you on Dad Cast. Would love more advice for first timers. Keep her lit. The issue of advice is very difficult to deal with because everybody has advice. Everybody has, oh, what you should do now, Jesus, do you know what you need to do? Oh, have you done this? And you're like, no, I haven't done that. I mean, and it makes people feel a little unhappy, mm. insecure. Like there's a secret code out there that only this middle-aged slash elderly woman knows. Well, one size does not fit all. No. no. And everybody is a different <coughs> circumstance. Before everybody and after birth. A different support network. Everybody's work hours are different. Everybody's, everything is. So it's hard to actually give definite advice to a first-time dad. Michal John O. Miachar on Facebook. I've also had that fantastic input from a similarly aged woman. Women, plural. On one occasion, I was asked if my wife knew where I was. <laughs> <laughs> What's now, the no the context the context with this you is your story you, you wasn't in a brothel or something <laughs> <wasn't it? laughs> does your wife know where you are <laughs> certainly not <laughs> why would you have the baby in a brothel I mean that's pretty well no, you never said he had the baby no, with the baby hasn't been mentioned yet the baby hasn't been mentioned so this is in the back of your story about uh, yes, the yes, woman yes. interfering with you recently enough when your daughter was crying. Yes. In the middle of Dublin city centre. Loudly. Loudly. She was absolutely hysterical. But I had it under control. Yeah. And so she interfered, interrupted. Some people... Some I was, people so I was just... just I was just... Uh, I was... You know that little laneway off... It's one of those little laneways off Grafton Street. Down where the church is. I was you going down there. A, a little quiet point. On the, <laughs> yeah. on the street outside. Quiet point. Can. Yeah. A quiet can. Uh, yeah, just one or two. Just get me through today. Those, those three hours I had to spend with my child. Yeah, you had this three fines. This is all I had to this do. This is my birthday. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, uh, one of those moments where things backfired quickly and suddenly she needs to be fed, yet I'm not anywhere where I can feed her and I also need to go and collect another child. So I'm just like, I'll get her back to the car, give her a bit of grub, it'll be grand. There's five minutes of lunacy. So I'm in the process of going back to the car and some woman comes up and goes, what did she say again? I think she's hungry. Oh, my God. What and did you actually say? What did you actually say? No shit. I think I'm fairly sure I just said no shit. <laughs> and kept walking. <laughs> I th- actually, I think I just went, oh, really? And just sped along. Mial has the exact same story. Uh, uh, so, on one occasion, I was asked if my wife knew where I was. On another occasion, I was told, and of course, I was given that golden comment, do you think she might be hungry? Subtext, feed your baby, you incompetent ape. Let the record state... My wife is fine with not knowing where we are at all times, and she's fine with it. I have never dropped my child, and my child is yet to starve to death. And that is the low bar that we set ourselves, and that is the low bar. And that's not a bar I've achieved, then. <laughs> <laughs> when you dropped the baby in what? this. Of course. What? what do you mean? Well, like... By drop the baby. By drop the baby, I mean the baby, both babies, when they were babies, have, like, hit the deck many times. 
<laughs> What's on the floor no, they have it, it, It's not that they have fallen out of my hands, but like on my watch. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, that's that's different. And while being delivered into their cot at one stage, dropped into the cot head first. Mm. Soft landing though. Oh. <laughs> like there was no permanent <laughs> damage done. Certain, dropped. There was no damage, as I say, permanent that we're currently aware of. There was a, a question from um, somebody which I, I can't find now, which was asking about uh, your birth experience and what you were doing down at the business end in particular. Did you have an active role? Me? That, yeah. Why me? Was it my wife who got in touch to say I was <laughs> over selling my importance during it or something? No, it wasn't. It was on Facebook. Um, I just oh, no. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Or were, were, it might have been referring to me, was it? Because I had... Were you the one that was... I had said that oh, that's I, was I was so far more involved than I had I, 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 anticipated. I feel like I was far more involved this time than the previous two, but again, maybe I've just blanked, the first blanked it out. But definitely this time, I had to have a good, firm grasp of one leg and... You were acting as leverage. Exactly. As was with I. my other hand, with my wife holding it and... Screaming. Screaming. Murderous thoughts. Blaming you. But there's nothing you can do. If the midwife says to you, grab that leg, yeah. hunk I it need, up here as hard as you can, I need what are you going to do? Go, here. sorry, I just came, I just yeah. came here to watch. I'm only you're a bystander. The, you're the professional here. <laughs> Leave me out of this. I'm going outside for a cigar. <laughs> Did you also have a, a leverage role? Oh, like it was right, right down in there. It Both was, times? Uh, no, 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 because the second one, like we'd barely got there and he was already with us. Oh, yeah. But the first one, yeah, there was... Uh, I was definitely there as leverage. Because like it's, you know, if, if the little lad's a stubborn old devil and isn't really enthusiastic about making his entrance um, and, they, it's, and the midwife is there on her own, she needs a bit of help. Yeah. And your wife needs a bit of help. Yeah. So, as Nathan says, when called upon, you have to step up to the plate, do it for club and country. Really as unappetizing we're, as it might we're be. We're the heroes of the situation. <laughs> yeah, we really are. That's how it works. Uh, Hugh McGuire says, good show, lads, and a great laugh, especially Jerry's buggy and hedge story. Um, I don't know if like, the near death of both of my children simultaneously is uh, essentially for laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> but uh, I've never done that, thankfully. My wife has had that in, I think she was just walking down the side of the road and left the buggy for, didn't leave the buggy, turned around and took her hand off the buggy and for some reason I think thought she had put the brake on and next thing she looks and the buggy is rolling out onto the road. Yeah, you do it once. I'm telling you, you do it once and that's it. <laughs> it does not happen again. Like I'm now absolutely paranoid in the house. I'll be like putting the buggy brake on going, ah, and it's not going anywhere. But you know, this is a, you know, it's a difficult enough thought to articulate. You know that you've got away with one there. Oh yeah, totally. Like tragedy can strike. Oh, and I think you get away with it all the time. I was just, my next question was, <laughs> how many traffic. times a week do you think you've got away, you've gotten away with it? Most likely would be thoroughly unaware of the fact that you've got away with it. My kids like to climb up on the counter now. Like, mm. how many times has the iron been right there or the kettle A knife boiled? just... Well, they play with knives all the time. And they're like, oh, look at this. <laughs> like, look at this. I'm like, oh my God. And the little one for a while would pick them up by the blade because that's the shiny part. Yeah. So you're like literally screaming at the top of your voice and it's pretty loud to the point where the whole house stops, everybody stops and you're like, oh, okay, there's no marks on the fingers, they're still there, we're not going to Temple Street. And like, you can see how... I think it's at this point the producer gets a call from social <laughs> services. <laughs> This is about me. <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> no, is that not, being but you're saying, so around. you walk in, the child is holding the knife by the blade side. Is that not a very difficult split second decision of, do I scream and go, drop it, and hope that they, their hand releases? Yeah, Are you scream and they go, Wah! Yeah. straight through, and I've, you've caused the yeah. destruction? I, I mean, the involuntary scream, a vast, infinite scream, like... You just have to do it. What else are you going to do? Because if you jump at them, I don't know. They must stab you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> Got to protect yourself. No, first they're holding the blade, though. Is she, oh, yeah. He, he can't right. be stabbed. He's safe. Uh, from Paul McCabe. Born in 1979, according to his email address. Lads, I drop my, school, my kids to school and crash twice a week before I go into work. Usually Wednesday and Thursday. Last Thursday, I had my daughter in the schoolyard and I heard a dad saying to his child, go in and I'll go home and get your bag and drop it in. <laughs> Obviously, I thought, what an idiot. Not bringing his daughter's bag to school. What a clown. <laughs> Guess what happened today? 
<laughs> yes. I added approximately 45 minutes to my day to go back home and back to the school. Is this a regular occurrence for dads? Because I've never heard a mother do it. I mean, definitely there have been times when I've been like, I can't believe what I've got to do. He may never have heard of a mother doing it. That is not to say the mother hasn't done it. He's just not being informed of the incident. He's not in the WhatsApp group where no, she's but like, oh, his wife just isn't telling him that he she has done it. I'm going to hang my wife out to drive. To say she is ten times worse than me at this. All right, great. Well, well, I did it last she's, week. She's she's teaching the school. The she does teach in the school, and I would regularly get a. You wouldn't bring in my lunch, which has now transformed into make my lunch. Well, no, <laughs> certainly not. Into uh, arriving in and Zach forgot his uh, school bag. You wouldn't uh, go and bring it in. I'm like, it's your job. Funnily enough, since <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say, since I've been bringing two children in all year, we haven't had one incident of a forgotten, forgotten school, school bag. bag, right? But it got to the stage where bring them into your wife's school. Are you? Yes, right. They go to the school she teaches in. Right. Why didn't she bring them? Because she's not teaching at the moment. She's on. Ah, fair leave. point. A good point, Nathan. This Sorry. is the point I'm making. So I bring them to school every day. Right. But it had got to the stage over the last two years where he was in junior infants, senior infants, that I would say I was in once a week <laughs> with a forgotten. Definitely once every two weeks. That takes a, a lot of patience. Bag. The secretary and me had a uh, frosty relationship by the end. All oh, right. Because <laughs> you have to bring it to her. I'm like, just drop it down to him. Oh, okay. So or it would be forgotten school bag or forgotten lunchbox. Can you so the school bag goes in, you get home, and you see the lunchbox still sitting there. Can you not just go straight into school class at this point? And like, oh, go on in. You, you, sure. Would you not just be nice and so, help the secretary out? I don't think they... Well, also, she You're sits at the front of door. I think I am guard of edit, but I still don't think you can go in the side door and just wander It'd into class. It'd be too class. embarrassing for your son anyway to see his dad rocking into the oh, top no, of the class. At that age, they're delighted to see you. Yeah. Embarrassment doesn't come to oh, really? Yeah. At that age, it's like... That's my dad. Yeah. Well, I rocked the whole down the driveway. Cold task uh, was crazy for twenty seconds, and it's a bit of excitement for them. Rocked up the crash driveway last week, like with one arm as long as the other, and they're look, just looking at the door, at the door, going, "Have we forgotten anything? <laughs> no bag for either of them. The other, the bag, most important being the one containing the nappies, the, the nappies. wipes, the bottles, like, the change of clothes. <laughs> several times in crash that happens. Like, You're like, no, oh, this is great. I feel very light today. <laughs> I'm so organised. Life is carefree. Life <laughs> is carefree because you forgot to care. <laughs> You've got to start asking questions of your kids, though, as well. Yeah, come as, on. As I point out, I'm like, it's your job to bring your bloody school bag. Where's the reminder? Yeah. I mean, they, they, get, they definitely get better at that. Um, I can't believe you don't make the lunches, though, no? No, my wife makes the lunches and I bring them to school. Seems fair. She's more patient than me because there's the usual... Well, I know I liked a cheese sandwich yesterday and I've eaten it for the last three months, but today I've decided I hate cheese and I've never eaten it again and you're the worst person I've ever met. You have to make them the night before so there's no choice. There's no conversations so. after they go to bed. That's the... Uh, also, what's the deal with parents leaving their five or six-year-olds in the yard and leaving? I see mothers and fathers doing it. Am I weird to think that a paedophile is going to take my daughter from the yard in the three or four minutes before she goes into school? Yes. I think, Paul, you don't need to worry about it. You've watched too much tabloid TV. Well, have they been left... Is it a secure environment? The school. This particular school that this listener is talking about. Well, we don't know. By the yard, yeah. that means they're inside the school gate. Yeah. I wouldn't leave my five and six year old as they are at the outside school gate. But the second 20 past <coughs> eight comes, the two of them charge off and I don't, I presume they go into school. Yeah, they're actually but at they, the back having they, bags. They may well be at the back having a bag. Like, I, don't, I don't see them again. But I would find it a bit strange to, when they get to eight or nine, I'd assume they're okay to drop them at the school. I think day. our listeners. Is this not one of these situations to where go. statistically there is a one in five billion chance? Has it ever happened? that a paedophile has picked up a kid at a school gate. From, from w- inside a school gate. Highly unlikely, I would have thought that has happened. But Don't look, blame us. <laughs> very few fears that any parents have could be considered rational. Oh, they're completely... You're just strung out the whole time from fatigue and emotional duress. So obviously you think the worst is going to happen yeah. again and again and again and again. For again. the next 20 years. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I can't wait until I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> the sweet release of death. <laughs> <laughs> in a home or something. One for Dave. Uh, That's definitely the headline tweet for this yeah. episode. <laughs> one, one for Dave. Uh, watch the first 20 minutes of the Pixar movie Up. You'll be a blubbering mess. Oh, oh I've been Come on. a viewer of that on at least 25 occasions. You don't even need to be a father to no. it's a very, get upset by it's that. It's a brilliant movie. And yes, the first 20 minutes are uh, 
It's very tough. Oh, it's impossible. It's impossible, like, Dante. I mean, yeah, like, it, you know... It, Especially having to try to explain to uh, the wee man... Why you're crying. Well, yeah, why I'm crying, but why the man is so sad. Yeah, because your man's going to die at some point, <laughs> and I'll be sad like that. But it's even before that, like, the, the fact that, you know, they're, they've been trying and it hasn't happened for them. If there's an awful lot goes on for a child's movie in the first 20 minutes of that. Where's his children? Well... But you can see them, like, they're... You know, they're uh, furnishing the, the nursery and they're putting the paintings on the wall. Does she have a miscarriage? Or yeah, she has right. a miscarriage. And then you see the doctor like just shaking his head at them and you're like, fuck. And then uh, the wee man says... I'm going to cry now. <laughs> why, is, why is he crying, Daddy? I'm like, what do I say? What do I say here? What did you say? And then, I, I can't remember, I assume it was just something like... Good you bit know, coming up. They thought there was... <laughs> I thought there was a baby coming and, and then the baby didn't arrive. Look at the dog! Yeah. And there's a crazy... Is it an emu? I don't know well, what this, it is. This was the first time we'd watched it together, so okay. I wasn't aware of what was We're coming up before that. Like, is it going to go even downhill from here? And well, it did, because she dies! So, like, it's a tough watch. The first 20 minutes are yeah. tough. And then, as the movie's title suggests, things do pick up from there. Yeah. And it's an actually... It is a brilliant movie. Um... We should probably do a full episode on what's safe to watch with your kids and when, and if anybody has any advice for good stuff to watch. Because, like, we try and limit as much of the screen time as possible because they go completely batshit after it. Like, trying to get them to sleep after watching TV, trying to get them to do anything, to focus on anything, to watch their, to eat their dinner is absolutely impossible. So, like, technically, they're only allowed to watch TV on a Friday night after, after dinner. God, what a shit gaff that is. Well, otherwise, they are fucking mental. But... Are they not twice as mental because they don't get their hour of just sitting no. on the couch and no, being calm? They, no, they just sit in colour or sit and, like, run around the place. Like, but if you show them enough, eventually they're not as mental as what I find. Bedtime, bedtime, <laughs> bedtime is like a two and a half hour <clears throat> oh, hand-to-hand combat to try and get oh. them down after watching TV. Like, they're just phew, running around Can you not just, screaming. we just have a cut-off time. And that allows at least 45 minutes to an hour for the mm. bedtime settling down process to run its path. Yeah, it's just, they're like... It's okay, not. if I was to turn around and deny them TV for five or six days a week, well, my life the would not be are, worth living. There's definitely some weekends. It's a free-for-all at weekends. Yeah, well, I'm watching sports. Do you not use TV to get them to do stuff? Like eat their breakfast, slash dinner, slash lunch, slash tea, slash supper. No. No, then, <coughs> to get then dressed. Then are you not entering? <coughs> we're not quite there yet, but I'm hoping in the next year you enter that sweet spot of on a Saturday, yeah, Saturday morning, morning. You can watch TV themselves. They'll just get up. I'm not going to lie. There's been a couple of times that that has happened. <laughs> it's like I get up and go down and turn. So when I I had a whole weekend of minding the kids on my own last weekend. <laughs> it was it was. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but definitely on Saturday morning at like twenty past seven, they're in, and I'm like, okay, Dad's not feeling great. And so I went like that ad, that really shitty ad. The alcoholics. He's not feeling very well. <laughs> Mummy isn't it was, either. It was a worst, great night. Worst it actor worth of it. all time. Nathan loves it. He finds it very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's my life. It's <laughs> Def- Definitely going to drink less next time. <laughs> <laughs> What? That was, me. That was least, me last Saturday morning. At least make an effort to deliver the line. <laughs> like you've been paid to deliver this line. At least make an effort. Yeah. To make it somewhat convincing. <laughs> you mean coming hungover? Uh, definitely. I took the TV on, but um, I had a toothache, like a really bad toothache, which had been bad for a week, and I was like ignoring it. And then the Friday and Saturday, it wasn't great. But then Saturday, my face just basically exploded. <laughs> and I couldn't sleep at all. So on Sunday morning, I had to get my sister to come over and mind the kids while I went into the dentist. But while I was there, I realized that I hadn't been to the dentist since I'd had kids. Because I was never scared of the dentist. And I'm still not really scared of the dentist. But I definitely have reached a squeamishness about a lot of stuff that I was not squeamish about before. And I don't know, I don't know if it's PTSD from the... The birth, where it's like there's blood on the walls and the floor and everything. Oh, like, on. I don't know if it's just a. But what else are you now squeamish about that you weren't before? Horror movies, like, uh, can't watch any of that kind of stuff. Can't just. I don't engage with any of that. Uh, I try not to watch too much coverage of war zones in a way that I would have actively Ooh. sought out that kind of stuff so that you can be properly informed about the shit that's going on in the world. But is I'm it, like, <coughs> I'm just going to check what's going on. Is it not more to do with the fact doing? that. Like, let's face it, you know that you've brought your kids into a horrible world and that you don't really need to be watching coverage of war zones to know that is the fact. 
So you'd much rather I would much rather watch a comedy movie than a horror movie or a thriller of some description. But I used to enjoy them. Yeah, because you didn't have to worry about the fact that there were these three people in the world that you were now responsible for and look at the hellhole that you brought them They'll into. They'll be fine. They can look after themselves. Uh, maybe. maybe. What's all that got to do with not wanting to go to the dentist? Though? I don't know. All the I... drills and the sharp objects and stern looks. <laughs> I made the mistake of looking at... So it was uh, pre-root canal. I've got to get the root canal done next week. I made the mistake of looking at the like what looked like a paper clip that she was jamming down into my... Uh, Still, there's, there's three canals. One's dead and the two live ones. She had to put some material into it. And I made the mistake of focusing on it. And then she jammed it down and I squealed. <laughs> <laughs> like Ned Flanders, a proper Ned Flanders. <laughs> and then, because I'd done that, and it was an open plan dentist, like there's 14 cubicles of other people getting stuff done to them. Um, I fell into a fit of giggles, but it obviously felt like I was crying. She's like, are you okay? As she dows my head. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I, I'm not sure that going to the dentist after you've had kids. Get, if you're like about to have your first child, go and get, get, get everything done. Yeah, and the snip. Get your teeth done too. Um, yeah, loving get the dentist. Get in the same place. <laughs> That's from Paul Medical Center. <laughs> sort you out from top to bottom. <laughs> well, certainly they, they had the good shit. My face was numbered three days after it. Uh, That's from Paul McCabe, ex golf club member. Um, did we get into? Did we get into that? Go on. Yeah, we did. Okay. Um, a lot of correspondence this week. Yeah, so agreed on the shopping. A great way to give the missus a break and check off 90 minutes with the kids. Win win, says Andrew McLaughlin. Fair play, Andrew. I agree. What? I concur completely. No. Like, we've, all, we've been over this. We disagree. Yes. As to the 90 minutes of a break for me. <clears throat> yeah. Well, there are other boxes that can and most likely will be ticked if you go down my route. You get to spend time with them. In a stressful environment. <laughs> yeah, where they're like, where they can escape at any point. And I break stuff. I don't, I don't have to go down the whole Kinder Egg bribery. <laughs> okay, 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 again, okay, but okay, we know okay. it's well worn. All right. Neil Keegan says the pros, there's pros and cons of having kids. The pros are little people and the improved crisis management skills when the twins threaten to shit themselves at the same time. The cons are mostly the cleanup. Um, somebody did ask, is it possible to find a way to make poo stop smelling like death? But you forget just how bad the stink of uh, your kid's shit is like oh. especially the early ones yeah well I thought it's mad um, maybe you know re, re, a spot of revisionism here but at the start is particularly if the children are being breastfed is it not a sort of a bittersweet smell <laughs> <laughs> bittersweet for the end of your life <laughs> I thought it because it's not mind, really Dave. it's it's pure liquid and it's not like a proper two and a half year old's dump which is just like Wiping the arse of an adult. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> and the size of them, they're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> the colon of a child stretches for a well, until they <laughs> Until they start eating proper food, it's just liquid. Yeah, but it doesn't stink that bad, does oh, it? Oh, it does. Ah, it yeah. can do. Yeah. The other thing that I, I forgot about was uh, the bin, particularly in summertime. Oh, when, when the nappies are there. Whew, it's like the weight of it <laughs> and the smell of it. That's going to cost is. you a fortune. We, I know. We just got out of the whole uh, pay by just weight. In time. Yeah, it was like, oh, we dodged oh. a little bullet here. So we, yeah. only, we, we only have like. But do you not the, have the, one the of those nappy the, bins? The word is good. Yeah, but where does that go? Well, it's kind of it keeps, keeps the, the stink bin. in. We don't have one of those. No, no. no. It doesn't. Or they wrap the, the plastic bag, just wraps itself internally and kind of there's a sealing off point. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't protect the smell. But then Maybe not at the height of summer. Your bin, your outside bin. Oh yeah, well, it's look. full of nothing but human shit. Oh, <laughs> it's, like, it's horrific. <laughs> I mean, we're involved in a sort of uh, in a cat and mouse game at the moment because the baby is on antibiotics. Oh, and she hasn't shit in five days. Oh no, which means it's coming. <laughs> who's, who's who is going to that? be? Who is going to be holding the baby Maybe when the it arrives? And is going to be the one who's that. well as I do. Dump the clothes. Yeah, well, it will be dumped the clothes. There were you? times over the years where I emptied the nappy bin and I'm carrying the, the bag that you take out down the stairs and thinking to myself, I'm literally carrying a sack of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and also feeling pretty virtuous about life. It's like, oh, look, I'm, I'm, doing, the, I'm doing my good I'd only ever now. used the phrase sack of shit, metaphorically speaking, before that. <laughs> yeah, now you but this was the literal sense. Uh, Chris Earl says, for God's sake, Dave, just bring the box off the waffles and fish fingers and show us, save us all the hassle. <laughs> we can't all spend eight hours. We can all agree on that. We can't all spend eight hours in Tesco a week. <clears throat> um, I, by next week's recording, I promise I will have the brand 
of the fish fingers, the waffles, and was there something else? Beans. I mean, the, the low oh, the, salt the beans. Low, but like no added sugar beans. Dave, Dave. No added sugar ketchup. I'll give you the exact brand. Or somebody could just sponsor us and we'll say that that's the And brand. we'll give them that brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is really good. <coughs> Ignore uh, the package. Colin Brannock says, in somewhere each of your four partners slash wives have their heads in their hands. Um, but so far, I think um, Debbie's the only one who's listening, is she? Well, she, I don't think she has listened since. All right. So she hasn't got to any of the good bits where you, like, talk about being the leverage as she gives birth to your children. Well, listen, it happened. <laughs> not making this shit up. I'm pretty sure my wife hasn't listened to an episode, or if she has, the divorce papers have already been drawn up, and I just have yet to be informed of it. Here's an interesting proper uh, comment from Robbie Graham. It says, I kind of get annoyed at the idea that all free time activities are off the table when a child arrives. Yes, early days, daddy and mommy should be very attentive and on call 24-7, but... As time passes, there should be a move towards a new normal where both parents share both parenting duties and go back to enjoying the things they've always enjoyed. Game of ball, golf, gym, coffee with mates or whatever. The keys to success are planning of and a desire to see the other person enjoy things both in and out of the family. When things get rocky, sick kids, a lot of work on, you retreat to the nest. When things are flying, work away. Is there something I'm missing that can't work for everyone? Not at all. Why? Was there an impression been given in previous episodes that you had to abandon all yeah. pleasurable activities outside of being at home? Yeah, pretty much. Not really. Golf really is what we talked about most. And the problem with golf is it just takes too yeah. goddamn long. Like you are asking for, between driving to the golf course and back and actually playing, you're looking for six or seven hours away, which is it's a lot to ask when there's a newborn around. But anything else, meeting a mate for a pint, I mean, all that can be done at, in the PM. I don't see why that's a major issue. After uh, the kids are in bed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I or you just go and meet them at five o'clock and your wife sucks it up for that night and then she goes out and does the same the next night and everyone's yeah. happy. Particularly when there's only one kid. And if it's a newborn, we've been over this before, if your wife's on maternity leave. Life's pretty easy in that, uh, for that p- time frame. Uh, okay, so um, a tweet this morning from Killian McBroddick says, Lads, today or someday, I'd like to hear your experiences of toilet training. I think it, it'll try the patience of any man. And then there's a, an emoji crying face. And then there's an answer from Fran Bellew, which is a good piece of advice, says, That's a summertime pursuit, Killian, once there's plenty of drying out. My experience is not to put pressure on yourself or the kid. It will all happen in good time. Once they're over three, they seem to get it. I do come back to the whole notion that uh, the whole purpose of potty training is to have somebody shitting in your kitchen on purpose. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> for the next six months, you're going to have a poo over there and we're all going to cheer. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and then after that, it's going to be a cut-off point where if you do it again, we'll be like, that's disgusting. <laughs> but in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, we're like, yay, well done, you shat in the kitchen yeah. and not in the floor. <laughs> There's no need to rush the process <clears throat> as much as you would like to be in a nappy-free zone. Just let it happen. It will. My own, my experience tells me that it'll. It will take more time or less time, depending on which kid it is. It could take anything to a year, or it could, you, I know of people, particularly parents of daughters, who are who have told us that like it, they took to it in no time. But I, I do think generally, I'm speaking very much in general terms, that girls are quicker on the uptake than boys are. There is an inherent laziness in boys that is inescapable. It's a but genetic never leaves when it comes to piss hereditary and thing. You know, if and when you have got them to the point where they get the concept of toilet training, that does not mean that they will get there in time. <laughs> they just decided, screw this. Well, they're easily distracted. Their attention span is not what you would like it to be. And often, while they do have very good intentions of carrying out the act, Distance, the distance between the toy they're currently being occupied with and the actual toilet can sometimes prove too great. Also, they piss a lot. <clears throat> like, uh, bath time for uh, the little lad. He pisses in the bath. I'm like, okay, Grant, I've got a couple of minutes here now to get him dry. No, no, no. <laughs> a minute and a half over. later, he pisses all over me in the, in the room we're getting dry. I'm like, yeah. you just went. <coughs> you just yeah, went. Well, you know what you're like in the, when you've had three or four pints and <laughs> then you haven't, been, you haven't been to the toilet once. <laughs> Once you go once, you're up and down like a gin at every 10 minutes, and that's the way it works. I, I would say that when we're on about giving advice, this can turn into one of the most stressful parts of yeah. bringing up a kid, because everybody is going to tell you what you're doing wrong, yeah. and what works so easily for them. Yeah. Like, our experience was the, old, L, the oldest child was, was 
tough and it went on and on and on whereas his younger brother was like what's he doing I'll do that no problem at the same time done literally within I'd say two months he was doing the exact same thing as his older brother um, a tweet from Kieran Cunningham last week was about um, shopping he says he orders online the excuse is I've got no time the reality is I can't be arsed to go to the shop I'm like absolutely missing out on a big opportunity for you know a full podcast to be listened to <laughs> yeah yeah, definitely. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the dadcast either. The other podcasts may, may tick that box. I think that you have to try, as Nathan said, it can be really stressful. Like, it's not easy. And you just have to try and keep as open a mind as you can. Do not listen to what other people are talking to you about when they tell you yeah. that oh it gosh. only took such and such an amount of time for their kids to get to this. It's it's going to be different for everybody. Plus, you have to accept that very often there's going to be a shit on the carpet. <laughs> You're just going to have to deal with that fact. and Get rid of carpet, if possible, is another yeah, yeah, is a definite yeah. piece oh, of yeah. advice I would yeah. give. Rugs and mats oh. often bear the brunt of these things. Um, <laughs> Piss and shit like, and puking. There is All a high five when the dump arrives on a hardwood floor. <laughs> <laughs> and it hasn't sunk in between the gaps. Boys are definitely a disaster, though, compared to girls. So I think girls also, when they get to even four or five, go, oh, I need to go to the toilet. I'll go to the toilet. Lads are like, oh, I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> I'll take another hour <laughs> while I hold every bit of me in an awkward position. Do you need to go to the toilet? No, no, I'm just going to sit here and watch TV for another 20 minutes. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Maybe that's just my house. No, it's not. That's so true. Oh, my God. Do you need to go? No. Well, why are you jumping on the spot for the last 10 minutes? It's fine. It's fine. I don't need to go. I really don't need to go. Okay, grand. Two minutes later. You just see them pegging yeah, yeah, out, the out the door at a million miles an hour, and they barely make it. Why didn't you just go when? The, and I'll press. I've told them I'll press pause. Don't worry. Like yeah, whatever yeah, it is, yeah, I'll press pause. We can <laughs> rewind. Don't miss anything? It's live TV. You're fine. <laughs> two last, uh, two last tweets here from uh, Emmett Burke says I also do the cross on thing in Tesco and Rathfarnham but, <laughs> but he's graduated onto pretzels and I get caught with them in the till now every time <laughs> obviously you just break the pretzel in half no? it's obviously a South Dublin thing is it of <laughs> robbing pretzels <laughs> robbing pretzels and croissants yeah no the pretzels are a disaster you're paying for those unless you have this as I said awkward standoff with the girl at the till where the child has the pretzel <laughs> <laughs> and you're refusing to acknowledge that <laughs> The child picked it up in their store and you just hope that maybe they'll let them away with it. All of this for saving 99 cents. I know, you're, you're just a thief. It's the, it's the joy of the thievery that is actually the thing that um, you're engendering in your own child. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. He's going to be stealing from your wallet fairly soon. Uh, two final ones here. So um, Barry was in touch to say, I just listened to episode five. Come on, Barry. I thought of the below when you guys were discussing the need to change cars as families grow. I also can hate people carriers. And in looking at options for avoiding such a god-awful addition to the house, I learned you can buy a bespoke car seat bench from the UK with three or four seats. So you keep your old car, you get this bench, it's probably a bit, it's multimac.co.uk and there's a company in Ashburn apparently that installed the systems. So uh, they're having their third and... Um, and so what is it? It's like a, a bench you, that fits to whatever car you have. Into the back seat for three kids. Yeah, or four it says. Um, four? Yeah. How are you going to fit four kids? Because well, they're actually, the, the three giant seats fit. So our size is they're nice and comfy, close together. Yeah, That's and I presume this has been regulated, Jer, and I mean I don't know. I guess some so. lad has put a bench in the back of his car. It sounds a bit nineteen eighties. Uh, and then last one here from Brian Hughes says, uh, "Here's a joke for Dave. I had a vasectomy because I didn't want kids, but when I came home from the hospital, they were still there." Boom. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, that's uh, right, can, I, can I just say one thing? Before yeah, yeah, we go. go for it. Yeah, um, I would like to discuss birthday parties on next week's oh yeah okay sorry and I just think I think it's best best that we didn't discuss it today because you're too angry (laughs) no 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 the anger has subsided but I think a week of advice from our listeners before we kind of dig into the subject next week would be very helpful so I have just gone through the experience whereby the elder child for the first time is cognizant of the fact that it's the younger child's birthday and it wasn't dealt with very well as in he didn't deal with it very well that there was another person who was the centre of attention on this day. All the presents that were brought into the house, bar one or two, very thoughtful relations actually brought something for him as well. And that's something maybe that we can talk about also. But uh, he didn't really 
take to the fact that all the unwrapping was not to be done by him and that was what was being unwrapped wasn't to be played by him unless given the nod by the birthday boy. Oof. We had a tough few hours and uh, I'd love to get the advice of our listeners on how maybe next year should be dealt with. But you can't just pander to him and get him presents. No, lessons no. need to be learned. No? No, you can't. No, you, as you say, a couple of people might give him one or yeah. two things to keep happy. It helped a little. Plus. But how have other people out oh, there dealt with this? And you guys are in... Are this a, is my first experience of it. We're now at four and two. You guys have had to deal with this multiple times. Who was times. trampolining? I was. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Where were you? The Santry. Okay, is that... Is it, is it all... Literally the entire place is just trampolines? Yeah, it's trampolines. a mixture. There's loads of different types of, of Oh, pieces, yeah, I was at one of them in Sandy for it. The, the, I'm fairly sure I dislocated my kneecap. Oh, you were on the trampolines? Hell yeah! Oh, no, no. Are you allowed to be on them? Was it your party? No. <laughs> Oh, I just brought the lads. They had been at a party. Well, that's different. And there was a reward for something, so I just brought the two of them on like a Tuesday afternoon. But, yeah, it's dangerous. Well, the, Try not waver. The message. Are you supposed to be in them? Part, there's no age there are, Yeah, no, like, there's, there's grown-ups. Looking okay. at me physically, I probably should not be on it. <laughs> but there's nothing illegal about that's me not being what I was on saying. Um, the, the pre-video says, uh, be careful because this could result in serious injury or even death. And you're like, that's all right. Go on, they'll be fine. <laughs> they'll be fine. They just have to say that for insurance reasons, I'm sure. So yeah, that's so, next week's topic. Yeah, yeah. So how to deal with the older child flipping out and being utterly overwhelmed by the fact that it's not about him in the presence or for his little bro. Was just the, parties in yeah, general. The, yeah, uh, parties in general. And, um, and you're getting on okay with all your kids, are you, at the moment, Dave? Yeah, we're tipping away. <laughs> when do we get into how the problems have escalated since you became some sort of a stay-at-home dad? I'm not really spending any more time at home than I was. Okay. I, I, I'm lucky in that I do get to spend an awful lot of time at home. Wh- when I was full time in here, that was also the case. And so, so, <laughs> so, so basically, what you're saying is, even though I've given up my full time job, you know, that actually hasn't made any difference at all. I never really came in. That sounded an awful lot better in my head. <laughs> <laughs> but to answer your question, everything's grand and uh, nothing's really changed over the last couple of weeks in terms of what I've been doing. Okay. okay, that's this week's episode. It's in the books. If you've got anything that you would like the lads to uh, badly advise you on, then you can email us, thatcast at offthewall.com. We'll see you next week. Good luck.